Yeah, let's go. TB Photo X 1.5 TFX, and welcome back to another video. Well, I'm sitting here reading a little bit in Jim Church's book, Essential Guide to Composition. It's a underwater photography's guide uh, in general, and using the different iterations of the Nikonos system in particular among some other underwater photography tips and tricks as well. But a really good book series that I really would recommend to anybody who is interested in going into underwater photography, among some others that you see a selection of behind me. But anyway, yeah, let's go on, shall we? Well, it's been a couple of weeks and I am, since I've been newly certified as a scuba diver again, uh, but uh, the thing is, I think that uh, I've actually started to get a little bit of uh, gear acquisition syndrome again, but uh, gas as it's called also. Uh, yeah, so it's not just photographers that can uh, be subject to a horrible case of gas. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, well, anyway, let's see here and then, well, <clears throat> As stated, I uh, we can start with it. back here. I have a little bit of a uh, bag of tricks, or a, a yeah, bag of tricks uh, when it comes to underwater photography. And uh, yeah, I have taken the the thing was that when I bought this on an online auctions, the the people that were looking at it didn't really seem to know what it was and didn't really have the knowing what uh, it what anything of this was so yeah i managed to snag this fairly easily and i put the uh, one of the things here on the nikonos 3 system so what in the world is this uh, thing that looks like a bent up old coat hanger and an aluminum tube and all this well what this actually is is a close-up system for the nikonos camera i can just do a little bit of a quick Disassemble here, let's see, yeah, here we go. There we go, let's see, so, and there. So, you have the Nikonos 3 camera here in all its glory, and I have the standard uh, 35 millimeter lens on it. And what you have then is, let's see here, a close up focusing lens for the Nikonos system, as you can see. And uh, what you actually can do is, regardless, you can use this with a number of different Nikonos lenses mounted on the camera. You can use the 35, uh, I believe the 28, and the 80 millimeter. But what you actually just, you just do is you put this on, do a little grub screw here to tighten it, tighten it. Then you have this little aluminum aluminium piece that is mounted to the accessory shoe on top of the camera and you use this little nylon bolt to tighten it and on the other on the side you have another little accessory shoe where you put this in and tighten it with this aluminium uh, screw thumb screw like so and uh, here you go this is actually a Nikon Nikonos close-up lens system to make close-up photography underwater and uh, when you have this type of lens mounted on in front of the actual camera lens you can't really use the viewfinder to do uh, your composition because it doesn't really work anymore because of the offset and so on so what uh, they do instead is that they give you this frame that will actually help you frame the shot that you're gonna do. So you can actually hold this and you know how it is framed and you can take an image. Uh, isn't that fairly neat? How neat is that, huh? And also with the Nikonos 3 system that is actually quite good is that on the other si on the side you have the port for the uh, flash units. So you can actually use this with and do flash photography with this system. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty neat invention, isn't it? Uh, not maybe by today's standards, but in the film days, this would have been a quite the desirable little thing to have. And uh, also you have here, you have the bracket for the 80 millimeter. So you have a higher magnification rate. So you just take off this one for the 35 and you put on this for the 80. And if you have the 28 millimeter, 
you use this one, which is kind of, which is the bigger one. So you have uh, three of three options uh, to mount your three different lenses in order to use this close-up, uh, this close-up lens for Nikonos, Nikon made in Japan. So this is actually, this is actually a native Nikonos system. So it's made by Nikon. So it's made in Japan, uh, which. Uh, well, at least in this time, the time when this was made, it uh, really significant, really was a staple of top quality. No wonder this circuit failed. It says made in Japan. What do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. Unbelievable. But anyway, <clears throat> another little thing that was in this little bag of tricks. Uh, was this little contraption? Well, these are actually three, and they were a little bit hard to put, take to get, take off. Now let's see here. These are something that you might be familiar with when it comes to uh, ordinary photography. These are actually extension tubes. So I got three of them here. Let's see here. And a little bit of a bonus feature as well here. If you so. look in the channel in the comment section below, there is going to be a link to the Facebook group for uh, U-Dive, which is the, the diver school, the dive school that I learned to dive through. And you will actually see a video taken by the diving instructor uh, from actually uh, the, the uh, dives we did at uh, Trollsjön in Tierp. And you will see me, I'm the one with the blue and black uh, dive suit, uh, dry suit, and I have the hood with the white stripe going over the top of my head. Uh, so you will see a little bit about me making a fool, about, a fool of myself, uh, keeping my fifth dive outdoors uh, with a dry suit, and so on and so forth. But uh, all in all, yeah really really good i'm gonna put that in the comment section below and also i will give you the link to what i presume is my dive instructor's youtube channel as well so i will have a you can have a look at that one as well in the channel description down below yeah so three different uh, extension tubes for the nikono system and these all correlate to let's see uh, these three brackets that also came in this little bag. So what's the big deal with these ones? Well, the thing is that if you not, don't want to use this system and you're still into using close-up photography, you basically you mount the 35 millimeter lens on the front of this one and uh, you basically, these are actually made by C and C, which I've talked about before that they made both their proprietary underwater camera uh, or rather underwater camera gear and the flash units for underwater use in particular but they also made uh, some some uh, third party material for the Nikono system and these are actually some of those uh, some of those third party materials so for instance you have here you have the you have the uh, 35, you put the 35 millimeter here and you put this uh, bracket on, screw it tight and uh, what's between these two fence posts almost, or goal post almost, yeah, that will be the, uh, you know, the subject that you will uh, be able to shoot. So uh, what you have here then you have the, uh, this one which is the, I think it's a one to one and uh, yeah, you, you see, there are different thicknesses on these uh, these uh, extension tubes, and they all correlate with one of these uh, extension tube uh, brackets. So yeah, you have the thir the 35 the 35 35.2, and here is the 35.3. Well, actually, I've actually put the wrong one on the wrong one. Okay, that that happens, but it's actually. I thought it was a little bit uh, peculiar, but uh, here we go. This is, because this is the tall, since this is the biggest 
of the extension tubes, it is the one that gives you the most magnification. So this one actually gives you a one-to-one, -one, which means you have this little small. So, uh, one, so this area in between these two fence posts are basically this, roughly the size of a 35 millimeter negative because it's a one-to-one -one reproduction. And uh, for this one, you actually have, let's see here, yeah. So you basically have the biggest bracket for the smallest uh, extension tube. So you can go from this one, which is the smallest extension tube with the biggest bracket, to the biggest extension tube which has the smallest bracket. It's a little bit backwards, yes I know, but that's how it works with using extension tubes for macro photography. So yeah. It's a little bit up to you which one you want to use, but uh, my thought pattern with this is that if I'm going to use the extension tubes, I actually have one more O-ring or O-ring seal that I have to be uh, wary about that it might be uh, accessible for leakage. So that can be something to think about if you are going with extension tubes on the Nikon O system. Let's see here. They are supposed to go together. Come on. So, yeah, they're a little bit hard to get together, but uh, yeah, you know, CNC also really, but really good stuff. If they're hard to put together like so, it means probably means good seal or uh, well, maybe not that's that's up to the future but anyway I thought I will just get moving on <clears throat> moving on uh, yeah you know when you have when you're out diving you have all your equipment that you want to be able to you know uh, keep stored on your BC when you are not using it well one way is you know I have bolt snaps like this one you have a my this is a brass one a double end uh, uh, that I use for my DSMB, but you know, uh, bolt snaps and double ender bolt snaps and so on, they can be quite expensive if you look at, if you look at uh, some dive stores and so on, if you look at online retailers as, as, at least, uh, that's my experience. But what actually happened was that a couple in the family and I went uh, and uh, we, we were going to go to a hardware store and uh, I just happened to look around a little bit and I found, you know, oh, a whole section with all types of, you know, clips and so on, like, you know, uh, carabiners. I uh, don't remember what this is called in English, but it's one of these, like a chain link that has a, you know, with a thread on it so you can actually open it and thread it closed and so on. So. Kind of an interesting little piece of gear to have and so on, to clip off, use to clip things off uh, on your BC and so on. Uh, so yeah, I managed to find these uh, bolt snap single enders. Yes, they are the small version, but uh, in Swedish, uh, Swedish kroner, I think I bought these for about 50, 50, 60 Swedish kroner a piece. So they were very much inexpensive and they're stainless. And so on so yeah I, I always thought like why not why wouldn't these work I mean these are made basically for DIY home improvement and so on so yeah Bauhaus we actually went to Bauhaus and I found all of these things you, you know and uh, fairly inexpensive so there's a top tip for you if you're out in in the market for bolt snaps check out Bauhaus so yeah, let's see, uh, here is one that I haven't taken out uh, from the bag, just to show you guys. Uh, it's made by Stabilt and Vi uh, Weibel uh, Schnapp Schnapphaken, uh, yeah, made in Germany. And uh, these bolt snaps have apparently a force of, they are supposed to be able to handle 25 kilograms of uh, weight strapped to them. So yeah pretty good actually so yeah let's see here now how to continue here then yeah and uh, yeah when you get these bolt snaps they can be a little bit stiff 
when you get them, they might not be that easy to manipulate and so on. Well, what you can do is you can get your... There are some brilliant videos on YouTube uh, about using bolt snaps and so on and how to tie them off on your gear and so on. Uh, James Blackman from Divers Ready makes a brilliant video, I'm going to link it in the description, uh, about how to use and tie off bolt snaps. And I'm sure there are a heap of other YouTube channels that have similar videos about using bolt snaps and all types of uh, ways to tie off dive gear on your BC. So yeah, do some searching on YouTube about it and you'll probably find something that uh, you know you like. But um, the tip I uh, actually got was in the groove on the bolt snap you actually put a little dab of silicon lube into it to make it uh, go, f go easy. Mm, kinky! Yeah, no, it's starting to get old that one, so yes, move, moving lot, right along. But anyway, <clears throat> I think we might now go to the main event, actually. I actually bought my own regulator. Now the only thing I need is a BC and uh, a, uh, my, the dry suit I might be uh, in the market for in the future. But I actually managed to get my own regulator set up. <clears throat> And uh, the thing is, there is a lot of uh, debates, uh, you know, about brands and models and makes and so on, uh, on all sorts of both YouTube, divers forums, and there seem to be a whole heap of uh, wills and uh, philosophies of use and so on, back and forth uh, about uh, and everything and anything. But I thought I'll just get go with these because <clears throat> It's a brand that has been around since the 1950s. They're made in Sweden. Uh, they have been, they have a proven track record and they seem to be used by cert, a big number or an impressive number of civilian and military agencies from around the world. So what is it? Well, it's Poseidon made in Gothenburg, uh, like uh, Volvo used to be. And uh, what model regulator is it? <clears throat> well, I'll show on this one. It's the Poseidon Jetstream of all the makes and models they make. So Poseidon Jetstream and uh, yeah, this uh, system or this entire regulator setup came with the, the primary in black and a yellow octopus or safe second. See here? Yeah. <clears throat> the um, the primary actually came with the necklace, so it seems like uh, the previous owner might have been one of those that uh, used the octopus primer, d who does a primary donate and uh, uses this for himself. Well, I'm not. I'm, I might uh, keep this bungee cord for the primary, but I'm one of those that likes to have a octopus uh, to donate to your buddy who might be out of air. The reason I think uh, that is that you have secured your own air supply first so you can help your body without you having to become more stressed in that situation. And, but that's just my opinion. So there is a, a whole heap of schools of thoughts uh, how to use uh, uh, primary and secondary if, it's you, if you're going to do primary donate, secondary donate and so on, or safe second donate. Yeah, there is a lot of schools of thought about it. Well, as you can see here then, moving along, you can see here on the primary first stage of the regulator, it is a DIN connector, which was actually a benefit for me because most of the tanks used by the local dive club are DIN tanks. So yeah, it became a good thing to have a DIN regulator or rather a regulator with a DIN first stage. And uh, this being Poseidon, then also this is ma made to work. It can work with up to 300 bars or 4000 psi roughly of uh, working pressure. So you can have a 300 bar cylinder for this regulator. And it is EN250 compatible. And it, this is the 3950, uh, no, 3960 model stamp on this one, which means, unfortunately, it's the older style of uh, hoses that are needed for these regulators. 
What does that mean actually? Well, it means that the overpressure va relief valve is not built into the first stage itself, but it's actually built into the hose. So in order if the first stage uh, malfunctions and so on, and you instead of having an uncontrolled free flow, uh, the overpressure will uh, be relieved through the valves that are seated in the hose. The, that, that's because this is the classic, uh, the classic version of the, uh, <coughs> of the jet stream regulator. But the uh, modern version, the contemporary version that is still sold by uh, Poseidon, has the same, mo uh, same look and so on. The only difference is, is that this fitting is re-machined, so it is screwed into the, first, the second stage, and then you have a standard low pressure hose connection between the second stage and the hose that goes to the first stage. So yeah, that's the difference. And there are conversion kits available, I have been told and I've seen, uh, that you can put a relief valve in your first stage and you have adapters for the second stage uh, threading here so you can use uh, standard hoses even with vintage or rather classic Poseidon Jetstream regulators like this one. <clears throat> Another little feature of the Jetstream that is easier to show you here on the Octopus or Safe Second because it's a contrasting color is this little black switch here. The previous owner has put some red paint here and you also have embossed here a plus sign and a minus sign. Well, what does that do, really? Well, these regulators can be prone to a little bit of free flow in the beginning of the dive. And I actually got this extra piece from the same seller. And uh, you can then see here the little, a little white fork in the, uh, in the valve here. And you can see here it moves a little bit. What it actually does is when you put this on minus, the forks will actually push up against the diaphragm that operates the valve uh, when you breathe uh, to give you air, basically. And what does that do? When you put it so that the forks are up against the diaphragm, you actually increase the, uh, the resistance. So you have to, when you breathe in, it will be a little bit more resistance so for the valve to open. And when you put it to plus, uh, you relieve that pressure on the diaphragm and the regulator becomes much easier to breathe through. And that's basically to counteract uh, the uh, potential of free flow. Also, what has been told is that you should not, uh, not store these regulators with the switch in the minus position. The reason being is that when these forks are put up against the diaphragm, there is the potential that they will actually warp the diaphragm over time and uh, you need to replace the diaphragm. Apparently, that's what I've been reading at least on the forums. So basically, this is a fairly standard setup. I have the the two second stages coming out of the right side of the of the first stage and uh, let's see here now on the left side you have first the BCD inflator uh, inflator eater hose that will go to your BCD and uh, there is a port here for a secondary <clears throat> low in uh, low pressure hose which uh, in my instance will go to my dry suit. So I'm gonna get that hose in the future. Also here we have a bolt snap once again to this little console and you can see this is not Poseidon, this is made by Sopras uh, which is spelled S-O-P-R-A-S. Sopras Sub and this is a, a, a air tank, a, air pressure gauge that will go up to 300 bars of working pressure. And in this gauge, you also have a, in the middle a little bit of a thermometer to show a water temperature. On the top here, we have a, a manual or analog dip gauge. And on the back side, we have actually an underwater compass. Even though as a newly qualified uh, CMAS one-star diver, 
we haven't really gone through underwater navigation but uh, all in all this might be a very good little tool to be using uh, on the surface at least to give you a bearing towards a point on shore basically so you can uh, make your way back to shore at least so yeah a little bit of a good accessory to have and in the future if i'm learning underwater navigation again uh, this is really a good piece of kit to have also i've noticed these are painted with a fluorescent paint so after i have put these in the spotlights here uh, they will glow in the dark for a time period of time also on the right side of the regulator i have another high pressure port that uh, is sealed off for now but I'm gonna get a little bit of a, a short, you know, stage bottles. You can have a short hose for the, for the underwater pressure gauge for stage bottles for people who are into technical diving. But the reason I want it is so I can attach my little Aqualung sender unit. And this is CE uh, marked, so it's uh, approved and it's uh, EN250 compatible and it is made to have a maximum working pressure of 300 bars or 4000 psi and apparently also when these are paired with a dive computer from aqualung they're paired for life and you don't have to repair them at every dive so that might be a little bit of a bonus but uh, yeah i think so and also for you i haven't really seen that many videos i have searched youtube and some other places to see some videos or some reviews about these uh, jet stream regulators by cycle by poseidon uh, but i've have a, I've had a really hard time to find any relevant videos about uh, poseidon dive gear i've seen some dima uh, videos on youtube and i've seen some more you know commercial-esque videos i mean the most uh, video i've seen about poseidon dive gear on youtube is basically either there is this guy from south africa i believe who has basically done unboxings of poseidon gear for uh, a youtube channel or a dive store and then it's alec pierce uh, that has that did a a short video when he talked about Poseidon dive boots which I thought were fairly cool actually because they seem to be heavily influenced by uh, Converse so if you look at the Poseidon dive boots and a pair of Converse uh, shoes you will basically see a lot of similarities at least in my opinion so yeah that's uh, well that's my uh, new old or vin or rather my used purchased uh, regulator setup for future diving so yeah i would like to hear from you guys <clears throat> i'm probably going to do a review video after i've used these uh, and tell you all about how my experience using them were but i would like to hear from you guys out there in youtube land do you guys have any experience with poseidon dive gear and if so please put it in a comment section below because i would be really chuffed about hearing uh, your experiences with it good bad indifferent doesn't matter it would be just interesting to hear about but i think that that will be all for me for now uh, and uh, yeah this was a little bit of a mix of everything video but uh, but as always this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX. I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh, take care from now on. Bye.